Hi everyone, and welcome back to another TS 2022 video. Hope you're all well, and that you'll enjoy this this run that I've got for you today. This time we're on the Munchen, I believe it's the Munchen to Garmisch Partenkirchen route. Which I, f I forget how old this is, but it's certainly not recent. I mean, <laughs> as you can tell, it's already got, in some aspects, it's already got the edge over um, the Train Sim World 2 version of Munchen to Augsburg because it, this version actually includes these underground S-Bahn platforms at München Hauptbahnhof, which for whatever reason are completely absent on the TSW2 version. And of course, as, you, as you've seen in the thumbnail, the train that we're driving is the Deutsche Bahn BR420, although I can't show you an external view at the moment because of the way this tunnel is set up. Now, I'm not entirely sure on this uh, red signal, oh, well, was red. Either way, we've got to really, I think this is one of those cases where the timetable is very tight and we basically have to gun it out of every single station. Of course, the BR420 has gained some, I guess, notability in the TSW community because it's been on the roadmap for a very long time, as far as I know, and uh, is still... It's, Again, as far as I know, nowhere near release. But, I mean, I'm not entirely sure if I'll get the TSW version. Because I'm quite put off from buying new add-ons for that game, to be brutally honest. Right, so as we come out of these tunnels, we are right, almost immediately arriving at another station. Which in this case is München Hakobroka. As always, I apologise in advance if I or if I end up mispronouncing any German names. I'm still not, but my knowledge on them is still not the best. Come to think of it, neither was my knowledge on when to properly slow down with this thing. Uh, what a way to start, eh? I just hope that we can at least get one coach on the platform. Seems to have done the trick. A bit weird that this unit seems to have, like, combined... Well, a combined throttle and brake lever, and then this separate one for the for the brake, like, if this, uh, I don't get it, is what I'm saying, unless maybe the, um, what you would normally use as a train brake is, like, supposed to help slow you down, or, or is meant to be used as the normal brake, and then you just have to, uh, use the one on the throttle lever as an assistant, in a way. Right, so... If you know the uh, Trends in World 2 version of München to Augsburg, you'll know that Hakobruka is the station where uh, the S the timetable mode S-Bahn services sort of start and end. And I know that very well because, oh hello, there's another 420 in a different livery. And now I don't know what this livery was for, of course, but I see it's obviously some sort of blue and white livery. It's interesting, a trio of units. Of course, I'm not. I'm certainly not an expert on the real BR420s. Although I do know that the or the, that they're not in service anymore, at least as far as I know. But um, I mean, I say I do know that, but then almost immediately followed up with, "Oh wait, maybe I don't actually know." Yeah. That's what you hear. That's what you. Can, I suppose that's what some people might find interesting. This raving lunatic from the smaller land down under that barely knows anything about German trains. Isn't that fun? Anyway, that train, that, that red EMU that we've just gone, that we've just passed, is that was a BR423, which is of course included with the TSW version of München to Augsburg. Although that unit is a bit of a is a right piece of work, in all honesty. I mean, not necessarily, but it's just the brakes on that 423 I think are somewhat dodgy. And uh, speaking of the München to Augsburg route, there was a... Well, the other night, I was trying to drive a BR425 from... Uh, it was Aug Augsburg back to München. And I think I got as far as, like, augsburg Hoxall, But the problem was that there were so many... Uh, like, this is a ridiculous thing with the München to Augsburg route in TSW. 
there are random and multiple sections where the overhead wires are completely missing. Indeed, on when you're at Donner's Burgerbrucke on the TSW version, this platform that I'm pretty, I think this platform that we're just leaving from now is one of those sections where there's a noticeably long section of missing overhead wires. And um, it might sound silly to say this, but I think in a lot of ways the old train simulator version of this route is actually better than the TSW version. And that's mainly from the fact that this older, the older version doesn't have missing overhead wires. Another section where you'll find that on the TSW version, I, I believe, is at uh, Munchen Puzzing. Before we get there, we've obviously got a few more stations to stop at. Now, this locomotive, which, yeah, I think that's BR15, yeah, BR151, is certainly one that I'm not familiar with at all. <laughs> Although I will say that whoever made this scenario certainly went to town on trying to get a good variety of AI trains which you don't get in TSW because of course in TSW you don't get like the obviously not the BR420 yet you don't get the ICE T like that one over there only the ICE 3 and the BR423 come with the route but you can also use like other add-on or engines and units from other add-ons like that one just there which that would hold on hold on hold on which unit was this because that's What's a BR424 doing in München, or Munich? Because of course these, as it says there on the side, this is um, this is from the Hanover S-Bahn. And speaking of which, I have featured this train in a previous video, and if if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in, but um, I don't know if I don't think I'll remember to put a link to the video in the top right corner or that sort of. Or, what I've tried before, but um, I'll make a note of it regardless. Anyway, this station that we're pulling into is, I believe it's pronounced, is it Hirschgarten? What's that beeping? <laughs> Probably goes without saying, but I don't, if you've seen any of my TSW2 uh, gaming, uh, gameplay videos, you'll know that, um, that I don't drive with the, uh, that I don't drive with any of the safety systems enabled. And the reason is because I simply don't know how to use them. And the times that I have tried, or at least from what I've experienced when trying them in Train Simulator, uh, they've been, incred it's been incredibly daunting. Well, not necessarily daunting, just very, very difficult and hard to understand. Although I think... Uh, what's that noise? Oh, sounds like something coming up alongside. And it's another BR101. Yeah, I really am actually really enjoying this run so far, despite the potato frame rates. And it's mainly because of the... Well, not only because the BR420 is proving to be quite an... I guess an endearing train in terms of how you drive it, but... Um, it's nice, I can't get a good screenshot there because the bloomin' catenary mast is in the way. As I was saying, yeah, it's, I like driving the BR420, and it's been a very long time since I last did so, and certainly the first time I've ever featured this thing on my channel. But the other thing is we've just, as I pointed out earlier when briefly looking at the BR151, is that uh, the variety of locomotives and units we're seeing is very good. Like, I don't know how realistic it is. I mean, as we just saw with the uh, BR424, it's not entirely realistic. Indeed, as we just saw, the 424 is meant to be in a different part of the country entirely. Right, this might do for a decent a angle. I dare say we'll probably get better shot. We'll be able to get better shots as we uh, get past München Puzzing. Next stop, as we can see, is München Lime. Now, for the life of me, I cannot understand how uh, the TSW version of M München to Augsburg, which I think I'll just call HMA, has missing overhead wires, how such a glaring issue somehow ended up in the final product. 
and this is something that I've never noticed with any previous t with any TSW routes before or since. Well, certainly the German ones at least. And I'm thinking, why? Like, I honestly want to know why, or even how, uh, that issue with the lack missing overhead wires ended up in the final product. Although these days, the only talk you'll ever get from Dovetail Games is when they announce new add-ons, or like when, or just when they're generating hype for for upcoming add-ons, or like occasional updates. And the stupid thing is that. If memory serves, in the last TSW update that they brought out, um, there were some fixes for HMA, but for whatever reason, it's still uh, miss the get adding in the missing bits of overhead wires was not one of those things that was updated. So, if anything, it just shows to me that Dovetail don't care about fixing the route, which, in all honesty, I think that's pretty disgusting. Considering like how much, how, how especially since how these routes and just the whole train simulator and TSW world in general is very expensive. But considering how many add-ons there are, I'm not surprised that there's uh, fluctuating quality control. I think there should be like a developer like, um, well, like Train Sim Germany, who I think is the one making the BR420 for TSW. They should take as much time as they... They should take all the time in the world to finish an add-on and make it as good as it can possibly be. Instead of often releasing half ass rubbish that ends up being... ends up getting a lot of fixes after the initial release. I will try to stop ranting about how much I dislike DTG's antics, but... Um, it's just something that's been weighing on my mind a bit recently. And in that, in that sense, I hope you'll understand. I mean, the impressive thing is, or at least the thing that I find impressive, is that despite the many glaring issues with DTG and their silly dealings, I still thoroughly, I do still thoroughly enjoy playing TSW and Train Simulator. Although... I don't have, I don't really have a preference out of either of them. Although I will say that uh, Train Simulator, well, that TSW, at least on my computer, takes significantly less time to load. And as a result, like if you just want to get in a train or a locomotive, because they're not the same thing, and then just go for a spin or just go for, yeah, go for a casual drive on a route that you really like, or, or just whatever route takes your fancy, really. Uh, it's a lot easier to do that in TSW than Train Simulator. And I think I've, I can confidently say that considering how much time I've been playing these games for. Like in the case of Train Simulator, I have had this game since December 2013. Let that sink in. And on my Steam account, on my Steam page, or like Steam library, it says that I've logged over 7,000 hours in this game. And as for TSW, I I think I've only really been playing it properly since about August 2019. Because that was around the time when they initially did the whole TSW 2020 thing. But that has since been... Well, that was like an update and sort of rebranding of the original uh, Train Sim world. And then in August 2020, it got done up again, well I think Dovetail actually brought out an entirely new game that was supposedly labelled as an advanced sequel, and that's of course what I've still got today on the TSW side. Right, now as we pull into uh, München Puzzing, this I think will be a last station that's also featured on the TSW version of HMA, and yeah, once we... After we leave here, I think we'll be branching off and heading down towards Garmisch Partenkirchen. But as this is just an S-Bahn service, uh, specifically on line S6, we'll only be going as far as Tutzing. I mean, that's not to say it's a bad thing. I mean, just looking at my notes, I can see that I've already that we've still got a long list of uh, station stops. Well, reasonably long, 
I think the next stops are Westkreuz, Locham, Grafelfing, Planeg, Stockdorf, Gauting, Starnberg Nord, Starnberg, Possenhofen, Feldafing, and Tutzing. I probably butchered at least one of those names, and for that I apologise. Wish you could uh, change the destination display on this thing in the scenario editor. But in the whilst you're actually driving, because it does look a little silly when you know that it's an S6 service and that it doesn't uh, display it as being an S6 service. Hang about. Oh. Okay, for a second there, I thought the pantograph wasn't or wasn't raising high enough to actually touch the wires. In which case, it would be like the time I tried driving the. NZR EO class electric locomotive on the uh, South African Pyotr Moritzburg to Ladysmith route. Um, I've featured the EOs before, but the Midland line, of course, or the route that the EO comes with slash runs on, is probably the laggiest route I've ever played. And I would put a link, I would feature one of the EO videos in the top right corner, but it's they're honestly not good enough, to be honest. Wait, no, I just said honest twice in the same sentence. What the hell's wrong with me? Well, actually, I can already answer that question by simply saying a lot of things. Now, here's something I think is quite interesting, like looking at the BR420 in relation to the newer 423, and I guess even the 424, uh, since we're obviously looking at S-Bahn units. You, you can see that the 420 has got four sets of doors on each side, which to me is, I honestly think that's a bit overkill. Let's see what it's like on the interior. I do apologise if you if you struggle to he, to hear me, but I've done I feel I think I've done all I can really to try and get my commentary as 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 audible as possible. And though that's not a subtle sponsorship, I should add. I don't even like audiobooks. I prefer to actually when I actually go to sit down and read a book, I actually want to actually look at the paper and read the words myself. So, yeah, I've noticed that the... Okay, so this route's also got bits of missing overhead wires as well, or at least that's what I've just seen. Thank you very much, Dovetail Games. Bunch of morons. As I was saying, I think the reason why the BR420 has got such a high number of doors on each side is to do with the fact that it is meant, a unit meant for like high density commuter services where they'll want where they want to reduce station dwell times as much as possible because the idea being of course that you'd with them with more doors that would mean that you've got all well, the passengers would have a lot more options on where they can actually enter and exit the train the Newer, well, the, obviously the unit, the dominant motive power on the München S-Bahn today, so the BR423, that's only got three sets of doors on each side. While the 424 that we saw earlier, uh, whilst that still, whilst that also runs on S-Bahn services, albeit as I say in Hanover, uh, which is a lot further north than uh, the part of Germany that we're in now, that unit has only got two sets of doors on each side and consequently looks an awful lot like the uh, BR425 and the thing with the, four, the in, having brought up the BR425 again I've just, I've just thought to mention the uh, BR426 which you might have caught a glimpse of earlier as we were going along between München Hauptbahnhof and München Pasing Indeed, the uh, 426 is kind of the, the BR 425 and BR 46 units are kind of like the German equivalent of the UK's class 465 and 466 networkers, where you've got the initial unit, which like the 425 and 465, they're four car units. Then you've got the 426 and, 4, and 466, which look pretty much identical, but they're only two car units. If I'm not mistaken, the BR426 is actually included with this M München to Garmisch Partenkirchen route. And uh, I haven't driven that thing in a long time, but from memory, it's certainly quite nippy in the sense that she can, in the sense that it can accelerate and decelerate very quickly. If anything, it's sort of like what we're doing with the BR420. 
mind you, you'd want trains running on uh, these sorts of stop high density stop start services to have good acceleration and braking. Otherwise, it'd be like trying to use the class. It would be like trying to use the class uh, seven six nine on I don't know the London Underground. The, in, by the way, in case you don't know what a class seven six nine is. Uh, if you know, or if you're even slightly familiar with the old, or if anything is good to know about the class 319s, like the original Thameslink units, and the 769s are actually just old 319s that have been rebuilt as electro diesels. And from what I understand, the, the re these rebuilt trains have awful acceleration when they're under diesel mode. Look around the station. Actually, that's the point. I wonder if this thing's got some sort of uh, crank that you can use to change the destination display. Well, that's just a handbrake. It's not a steering wheel, of course. Because trains don't need steering wheels. Unless you're one of the unless you're one of the uh, things in the Thomas reboots, in which case you just about need steering a steering wheel otherwise they'll keep pinging off the track hmm I will say that um, this cab is certainly no this isn't necessarily a criticism but the cab on this thing certainly looks a bit dated mind you I think so is this whole train and I obviously don't know just how, I don't know how old the BR420 is, but I'd say it they're like from the 1980s at least. Now, here's something a bit weird that I've just noticed. There's no corridor connection between the coaches. I don't think that I don't think that sort of thing would work in this day and age. Although I think the um, I th if I'm not mistaken, like the intermediate or the coaches on the BR474s. The Hamburg S-Bahn units, they don't have gangway connections either. And I just find that so odd. Like, even... Uh, even, like, the London Underground, they don't necessarily have proper gangway connections, but... Uh, in the they do have doors in between the coaches, so you can, at the very least, walk in between them. Even if, like, that's only for the staffers, or for, for the driver. But... With a unit like the uh, BR420 or indeed the 474, it's unusual because you'd think that on a high density metro system, especially in Hamburg, which looks more like a metro system than a heavy rail suburban line, you'd, I would have thought they'd want a gangway connection between the coaches to make it easier for passengers to find or to get to like less crowded parts of the train. Indeed, I mean, you can, or you can go one step further than that. Uh, or in the case of an obscure Asia song, one step closer, and just have open gangways, like what you get on, say, the London Underground S stock, or indeed the uh, BR423, where there's obviously the gangway connection between the coaches, but there's no great big door in the way, and passengers can easily walk between the coaches. definitely makes it a lot easier when you've got that feature because uh, I mean I mainly speak from experience with the um, EMUs that run commuter services in Auckland and Wellington because they've both got the open gangways between the coaches well that's only within the unit I might add hello speaking of units there's another BR420 going back towards Munchen now one thing I find curious about these older trains is that well this particular unit has only three coaches but then you've got the 423 which is four coaches and I'm just wondering why these older units have that have one less coach because um, if anything I'm more used to like the four car trains mind you the BR474 is uh, only three cars as well, or at least what I've seen, what the variants that's in Train Simulator, or variants, I think. So I'm pretty sure there are two 
vari there's at least two variants of the BR-474. One can only run on third rail, while the other is dual voltage, and obviously can run on overhead wires as well. And I don't I don't know too much about like the. Come to think of it, I don't really know anything about the railway infrastructure in Germany, but I'm pretty sure that the electrification, at least, or well, the main electrification, is 15 kilovolts AC. And I think I've just about overshot the platform again. Yes, I, at least there's still. Well, I suppose in real life you could probably still just about get away with opening the doors on the first coach, but with the with the way uh, train simulator works, I think it'll only open the doors on a coach if it is actually if the entire vehicle is actually within the platform. Just trying to work out what the surroundings are for this station. Funny how it's all built up on this side, and then the other side is essentially just forest. Uh, there's what looks like a football ground with a bunch of bunch of what New Zealanders would call tradies um, trying to uh, sit. Um, mate, I think I think your colleague is uh, stuck. That's probably why he's waving at you. He wants you to help him. He wants you to. Uh, he wants you to help him get his feet unstuck. You're not going to do anything? Guess not. <sighs> you dozy old prawn. Right, back to our train, methinks. And it's a good thing too, because we've got to leave, we have to leave again. Another thing I've noticed about this train is that the stations, or this, not necessarily this train, it's just this journey, is that the stations seem to the the process of like slowing like, st de like st stopping at a station, taking on passengers, and then setting off again. And even though that's like quite repetitive, I st I've noticed that it's going by rather quickly. Is it? It's like with this train, at least, it seems like no sooner have you accelerated to 100 kilometers an hour that you almost need to almost immediately need to start slowing down for the station. Considering that the BR420 is a relatively old train, I'm quite impressed by how quickly she's able to accelerate and decelerate. Even though, with the, with the deceleration part, I'm sort of having to I'm having to use both, well, what are te technically both brake systems, and I'm still really confused as to why it's technically got two separate brake levers. Although this. Um, what looks like a basic air brake seems to be working quite well because if we put the throttle lever into braking so that significantly increases the number of amps and I think and I th I'm just guessing, hazarding a guess here but I think the throttle or this, uh, where is it? yep this one I think this certainly looks like it it's uh, one side's a throttle and the other side is a dynamic brake. Let's reverse her. Now, I wonder if it's po I'm just trying to find if it whether or not it's possible to switch the uh, instrument lights on. Because usually you just press the I key, but in this case it's not working. Desk lights. Um, I think, it, does it actually work? Yes, but I can't see where that light's coming from, even if I look up here. Uh, okay, what's this one? Uh, that's the headlight control. It's not really doing much. Indeed, I'm not... I'm trying not to use the headlights because... Uh, uh, because, they're, as you can just see now, the these headlights are unrealistically bright. And that's another thing that has always bugged me about a lot of trains in this game is the fact that the uh, headlights um, are just far too bright and I think in, in real life they're not actually meant to light up the track in daytime but like only at night but I 
think that's the case, I don't know for certain. One thing I have noticed is that as we're getting out, or as we're getting further and further away from the centre of Bunkian, the stations are getting further and further apart. And I believe that, of course, that is sort of tradition in a way. And once we get south of Gal Galting, the the line should get an awful lot more scenic because, and once we get down towards uh, Starnberg, we'll be running right along. Well, that station at least is right alongside a lake. Although I don't remember how well the railway keeps up with the lake on the remaining uh, remaining section. But at the start, well, back at München Bahnhof, I saw that. Well, I made a note that there were, were about. Uh, the total journey distance is about 39.3 kilometres and I see we still haven't even gone well, technically we still haven't even got halfway but I'm just thinking it would certainly be quite interesting to see how the uh, TSW version of the BR420 goes although I think partly because of how much easier it is to set, to set up a basic run in TSW. If I were to get the TSW version of this train, I'd probably end up using it a lot more than the older TS version. Although, of course, that's not to say this TS version is bad, and far from it, actually. Now, I think from this station onwards, the line goes down to double track which is in stark contrast to the whole München to Augsburg route where that's, basic, that's basically four tracks at least or it's either like six or five or four tracks the whole way from München to Augsburg and certainly on average it is four tracks I suppose now is as good, as time, as, good a time as any to have a drink of water starting to get a bit parched from all this talking. Alright, that should do the trick. I like how mechanical these uh, blinds look. It's certainly a bit more. I mean, it's not. It's not that complicated, but it's certainly a lot more so than what you get these days. Because I think on a lot of modern trains, they just have sort of drape, or like that sort of, sort of like curtains, almost. That like you just pull down, and they sort of slide on sort of, on a rolling wheel or whatever. I don't. I don't flipping know. Either way, or what I do know is that we're on the move again. Okay. I think this label on the right there is just saying, essentially saying what the maximum speed of this unit is. Which, and of course it is 120 kilometers an hour. And uh, indeed, I think from, mem from the memories I've got where I've driven the BR423 on HMA in TSW that the average or the maximum speed that you're, able, that you're really able to get up to on when you're doing that S-Bahn run is only about 120 kilometers an hour and even then that does throw me for a loop sometimes because sometimes I actually forget to slow down properly on the approach to a station and end up completely overshooting and that run with the BR423 is, I think, is one of the hardest runs I've ever tried doing in TSW. But if anything, it's just a combination of the unit's subpar braking, incredibly tight timetable, and having to try and, in my case, I always have to try and stop in exactly the right place. And because, or because that rather stupid action point system in TSW is incredibly unforgiving and this is and speaking of the BR423 although it's interesting I wonder if it's a, oh it's interesting it doesn't it's just a generic S-Bahn branding because normally they've got like specific cities names on on the side as well 
That's S3 to help Bahnhof, but what's the scene say? S3 to uh, München Flughafen. It's odd. I wouldn't have thought that um, S3, I don't think S3 services run down this way. Although I'll probably end up having to look at a map of the München S-Bahn just to be sure. Because I thought that the only S-Bahn service that ran down this way was the S6. If anything, I would have rather, I would have preferred it if uh, Dovetail had, like when they did HMA, if they instead of just focused on uh, just the S3 again, they could have also added this section down to, well, at the very least, uh, down to Tutsing. Because as we're about to see in a few minutes, it's a lot more scenic than than just racing along. No, what's that beeping? Than just racing along adjacent to a uh, essentially a high speed line for just about the whole just for just about the whole way, the whole route rather. All this white muck on the ground. It's like a giant's dandruff or something? Or like a leftover from winter? I don't know. Certainly pretty basic in terms of detailing in the sense that the scenery doesn't look like it or looks like it's pulling in Edinburgh to Glasgow and doesn't go too much further away from the track. Just curious, a disused station. Let's see I think if we go on here it'll say what the Oh, it's odd. I thought it would have like markers that showed if it was a uh, disused station, but or it'll, like what the station's name is. But obviously, in this case, it's it doesn't have any. Of course, besides the uh, S6 service, this line that goes south of München is well. There's obviously the the route add-on is called München to Garmisch Partenkirchen. And indeed, it does continue a fair bit further south than just simply Tutsing. And um, if I'm not mistaken, Dovetail, a while, all, all, quite a while ago, they also brought out the, I think it was Mittenwaldbahn, which was technically an extension to this route, and it m continued it all the way to Innsbruck in Austria. So it's one of the few international routes in the game that I'm aware of. And certainly one of the few, if not possibly the, even the only... Wait, no. It's not the only, yeah. It's one of the few international routes that Dovetail have made. It's the only other one I can think of is uh, Strasbourg to Karlsruhe. Although the lack of scenario... The, almost, uh, the, the, the low number of scenarios I've seen for it on the workshop have really put me off from driving on that route. Although there was at least... Well, I have managed to drive uh, to do at least uh, two runs, uh, three runs on that route. Two with the uh, SNCF TGV Euro Duplex, and one with the Deutsche Bahn BR406 or I3M. And here we are at Starnberg Nord. Nord, of course, being German for North. And whilst here, um, just trying, just trying to make a note as quickly as I can to a uh, video about the, um, t uh, the TGV duplex because one of the uh, the first video I recorded on uh, Strasbourg to Karlsruhe by my standards that went ballistic uh, despite being a pretty basic gameplay video with no commentary and again potato frame rates somehow that got over that's I think sitting at over like 1700 views which is the sort of uh, state that mo the the vast majority of the stuff on this channel can only dream of, and that's one thing that's always pissed me off is the fact that these videos ab seem to absolutely struggle even to just get 100 views. Doesn't make a lick of sense. Right, doors are shut, and we can head off again. As much as I want to floor it again, I know that that's not a good idea because you can see that the um, you can see just on the HUD there the speed limit is soon going down to 60 kilometers an hour. And 
and indeed the next station is Starnberg and after that we've only got well now at the, as it stands right now we've only got three more intermediate stations before we get to Tutsing and at some point I might wait hold on why is the speed limit now 40? I must not have been looking at the signals but as I actually know what screw it I'll stay at 60 and as I was saying I might uh, might record a video covering either the full length or like the southern half of this route, with, ideally with the BR426. But I, if I am going, if, even if I am going to do that, I simply can't promise any time for when it will go when it would go live. This isn't really, I'll tell you what, uh, this uh, Starnberg station is not really the sort of thing I think of when I, when I think of S-Bahn stations. Because normally you just expect them to be a simple island platform adjacent to the main line and like with very, somewhat generic scenery, but... Um, okay, it's weird, I'm just hearing chattering from me. Sounds like my parents in the hall, and I'm not sure what's going on there. I just have a nasty feeling that they might end up barging in on me whilst I'm still recording. Anyway, this is uh, this just this whole scene here is pretty much the main reason why Starnberg is my certainly one of one of, if not my favourite station on this route. And did if memory serves, I did shoot the intro for the. Um, I think I used a scene here. I think I must have, I seem to recall shooting an intro scene at this station for like the uh, video I made that was essentially just um, like an evolution of the German ice trains and I think I had the BR605 or Ice TD passing through the station and then there was the BR420 on one of the other platforms the BR605 of course being a somewhat unusual four-car diesel variant of the Ice T or BR411, which is a seven-car EMU. And incidentally, if my research is correct, the BR605s were so unreliable that they were actually withdrawn. I think in like 2017, because I think they were used by Deutsche Bahn as well as I think the Danish State Railways. And indeed, some of them did end up getting repainted in like sort of a dark blue and grey DSB livery. Not sure what run, runs the Hamburg to Copenhagen services these days, but I'd hazard a guess and say it's the Danish IC3 DMUs. I've got a 40 limit coming up. That just looked just off to the right there as we're pulling away. I just noticed it looked like a whole a great big shed of bikes. I suppose it would make sense, like just just to have a, to have a, what is essentially a lockup where you can safely safely store your bike before catching the train. Although I think in some cases they do let you bring bikes on a train, just not very many of them. It's nice that you can still see the lake reasonably well, as even as you leave. I think from from memory, I think from this point on, we sort of go inland a bit more. Mind you, we are already inland. I mean, it's that's just a lake; it's not a sea. But what I mean is, like, we think as we go along, as we go along, we'll probably end up going further and further away from the lake. Indeed, I don't remember what the scenery's like all that much as we go further south, but, well, like south of Tutsing, but I do remember that some parts of the route are at least uh, single track, which is a bit unusual for a German line, at least from, from what I've experienced. Right, and now we're, I'm trying to maintain 120 kilometers an hour as best I can, but uh, it is at the very least, uh, well right now we're basically doing two kilometers a minute, which is certainly, well, I mean I say impressive, but I think it's only equivalent to like 60, 
62 miles an hour or wait no that no 60 miles an hour I think that's equal to about a hundred kilometers an hour or no, I, I don't know although I do remember that a mile is equal to like 1600 meters either way up it's got it's too conf that's all a little confusing so I'll try not to dwell on it for too long I think uh, some of the trees that I was seeing earlier on this line they look like they were sort of autumn colors like, like it was sort of green or like yellow and orange what have you and I don't know for certain but I'm guessing that this scenario is meant to be set in autumn Either way, it's definitely, a bit of a, it's definitely quite cloudy, as you can, as you've seen throughout this whole run. All right, timetable is a bit tight, but I think we'll, I think we should get to Postenhofen on time. Indeed, this, uh, as we've seen, this train can slow down very quickly, so that should, should, should get there on time. Indeed, it looks like we will. When I've tried driving the BR423 in TSW, I've, well, and like the BR422, and I guess even just other German EMUs for that matter, I've always tried to enter the platform like no faster than 60 kilometers an hour, or 70, depending on how good the train's brakes are. tell it's a tight timetable when we arrive with only seconds to spare. Actually, I think that's normal for the German railways, although obviously don't quote me on that. Alright, not long to go now, which is good because I need to go get some food and then actually go up north to a, to a town called Pukekohe, which is fairly close to Auckland, but is technically a separate town. And as for why, it's because I'm, use, I'm going to use this opportunity to film some additional trains while Mum and Dad go looking for a new car. But that's somewhat irrelevant to the video at hand, not to mention that I generally don't talk about what's going on behind the scenes. Although I've made that sound like it's a good thing. Well, that wasn't the intention, of course. Anyway, next stop, if we can get there quickly enough, is Feldafing. And just looking at like these little patches of white along the grip dotted about, I think it's just like there must be snow like left over from the last winter or something although that wouldn't make sense because it's because winter is after autumn but I maybe it just still gets that just that cold in Germany that even by the next autumn they've still got snow on it's still got little patches of snow everywhere I wouldn't know because I barely know anything about German railways let alone the country itself That's certainly a very high step up. Indeed, I think it reminds me of when I've tried to get on an ADL D 
these are multiple units at Pukekohe Station. Except I think, um, in this case, I don't know if the platform is actually meant to be this low, but, um, yes, it's certainly a bit of a strange conundrum. Please note that there was a red signal just before Tootsing. Please press tab in order to... Okay, I think I've got the gist of that. Right, I think since this is the last chance to do so, I'll just get a... I'm going to get a somewhat cinematic shot of our train leaving. But of course it just had to be ruined by that stupid lag. At least it's not been too much of a of a nuisance this time. And we still made it through basically the whole journey. Actually that's the point, I'll just try to get it one lap stint, probably one. Or another at least one more screenshot with the train passing the patches of snow. Probably end up getting one more shot once we get to Tootsing, but we'll see how it goes. Tell you what, I'm not surprised that the uh, the line that we're on now is so much quieter than it was, or than the section between München Holtzbahnhof and München Pazing. Then again, I suppose, that's one thing I've always liked about these kinds of journeys is that uh, you start out. In this case, we start out in the middle of a big, a big and busy city, and then as we go along, the line will get uh, gradually quieter to the point where there's like maybe only one or two other trains nearby. I always like that sort of gradual transition and indeed the sort of gradual transition from the urban city landscape to somewhat small lakeside towns that we're going through now. Or at least what feel like lake, yeah, <laughs> lakeside. Um, yeah, there's, you can still see the, the lake over there. This reminds me of like, sort of reminds me of, um, uh, what is it? Um, like Sandown, or that, that section between Sandown and Shanklin on the Isle of Wight, where, where you're still a fair distance in from the, you're still a fair way inland, but then you can look out and just about get a glimpse of the sea, or in this case the lake. I don't know why, I've always, I've always liked that, especially in the case of the Isle of Wight. see that we're the only train in town today, or at least the only train in for, for now. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our final destination. This is, of course, Tutsing. And being an S-Bahn S6 service, this train will now terminate here. And so on that note, I think I'll just say, oh, I think I'd, li I'd like to say thank you very, very much for watching. I must admit, I've really quite enjoyed driving this train again. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing her as well. And uh, 
yeah, that's really all I've got to say. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.